Good day guys, today we're going to solve this problem using parallelogram law. Let's read the problem. The plate is subjected to the two forces at A and B as shown. If theta is equal to 60 degrees, determine the magnitude of the resultant force of these two forces and its direction measured clockwise from the horizontal axis. So the problem states guys that the value of our theta is equal to 60 degrees. And also, what we needed to find in this problem is the magnitude of our resultant force and its direction. So we need to find the value of these two guys. So before that, let's draw our forces on our x and y axis. So this is now our forces guys on our x and y axis. So this is our force A guys which is 8 kN and at the bottom this is our force B is equals to 6 kN. Now guys this is our theta the 60 degrees and the angle of our force B with respect to y axis is 40 degrees. Now guys in solving the value of our resultant force we need first to draw our parallelogram since we will be solving this one using parallelogram law so let's draw our parallelogram guys so from the tip of our force a guys let's draw a parallel line of the force b so since this line here right here guys is parallel to our force b then this must also be 6 kilo newton and from the tip of our force b guys let's draw a parallel line of the force a since this is parallel to our force A, this must also be 8 kilo newton. And now guys, we can now form the resultant line, which is from the tip or from the beginning of our forces goes to the tip of the parallel lines. And that is our resultant line. Before we can get the value of our resultant force, we need first to get the value of the interior angles of our parallelogram so let's zoom guys now by looking at our parallelogram guys on this y-axis guys this vertical line since that is a straight line so the sum of its angle guys is equals to 180 degrees this green angle guys and we already have the value of 60 and 40 so let's subtract guys 180 minus 60 and minus 40 so we can get the value of 80 degrees so the angle 80 degrees is right here that is where our 80 degrees now guys the properties of a parallelogram guys opposite angles are equal so if our angle right here is 80 degrees and its opposite side guys which is right here must also be 80 degrees so this is also 80 degrees so as I've said guys that opposite angles are equal so whatever the value of our angle right here is equal to its opposite angle which is right here guys so how can we determine that angle let's use again guys the property of a parallelogram so the sum of the four interior angle of a parallelogram guys is equals to 360 degrees and we already have the value for the two interior angles which is the 80 and 80 so let's subtract 360 minus 2 times 80 degrees and let's divide it by 2 since the remaining two angles are equal and let's label this guys as our angle c this is also our angle c so in finding the value of our angle c we can get its value guys is equals to 100 degrees so the value of our angle C guys is 100 degrees that is this angle and also right here this is also 100 degrees now guys remember that what we need to find guys is the value of our resultant force and our parallelogram guys as you can see the resultant line which is this red line divided our parallelogram into two congruent triangles and each triangle guys has the same values since they are congruent now we can use this triangle guys in solving the value for the resultant force because in a triangle guys we can use the law of sine or the law of cosine in getting the missing values 
So let's draw this triangle right here guys at the top triangle. So this is now our triangle guys. So as you can see we already copied its values. So let's label this angle right here guys as our angle B. And on this angle let's label that as our angle A. So if we go back to our main parallelogram guys our angle B is right here. This is our angle B and this is our angle A. So let's go back to our triangle guys. So in getting the magnitude of our resultant force guys, by looking at our triangle we have two side and one angle. So we can use the law of cosine. So resultant force squared is equals to 8 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 multiplied by 8 and 6 cosine 100. So let's square root both sides guys to cancel the squared of our resultant force. Thus we can get the value of our resultant force is equals to 10.80 kilo newton. And that's how we can get the magnitude of our resultant force. Now if we go back to our question guys, what we need to find is the value of the resultant force and its direction. Now we already have its value. So let's get its direction. So let's look at the problem again. So its direction measured clockwise from the horizontal axis. So this is our horizontal axis guys, which is on this line x axis. So from that line guys, we go to our resultant force clockwise. So which is right here. So this angle right here guys is what we need to find. Now before we can find this guys, let's first get the value of our angle B so that we will have a guide on how we can get this angle. So let's go back to our triangle. So let's get the value of our angle B. Now in getting the value of our angle B guys, we can now use the law of sine since we already have many values of our triangle. So let's use the law of sine. So sine B over its opposite side that is 6 kN is equals to sine 100 over its opposite side that is the magnitude of our resultant force 10.80. Thus angle B is equals to arc sine 6 times sine 100 over 10.80. So angle B is equals to 33.169 degrees. So now guys we have the value of our angle B. So we'll make that as our guide guys in getting the direction of our resultant force. So this is our angle B. And the value of that now guys is 33.169. Now guys by looking at our resultant force or its direction guys. So this is what we need to find right here. So guys in order to do that guys let's find angle from this one guys. So that if we can get the value of that angle guys let's just subtract its value from 33.169 and we can get the direction of our resultant force. So how we can get that value guys. Remember guys that by looking at our theta so this is our theta 60 degrees and on this side right here guys on this angle right here remember that this is a 90 degree angle right here from y axis to our x axis that is 90 degrees and we already have the value of 60 degrees so in order to get the angle of this value guys so let's subtract guys 90 minus 60 so we can get this the angle right here or our value right here and that is 30 degrees now that we already have its value guys so let's subtract guys so in order to get this angle let's subtract 33.169 minus 30 degrees so guys the direction of our resultant force is equals to 3.169 degrees so that is how we can get guys the direction of our resultant force 
from the horizontal axis clockwise.